Some of y'all in West Texas had some Easter egg size hail yesterday, but what are we looking at for the rest of the week? Let's talk about it in the Monday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning, I'm Texas Storm Chasers David Reimer, and this is the Texas Weather Roundup for Monday, the 10th of April, 2023. We did end up dealing with thunderstorms yesterday across portions of the Panhandle in West Texas. Some of those, unfortunately, did have quite a bit of hail, contrary to what I expected and expressed on Friday's Texas Weather Roundup. Unfortunately, we did have a bit more instability than model data was projecting when I created the forecast on Friday. So what I I expect it to be a couple of showers without a big high impact issue or washouts ended up being quite a bit of hail, unfortunately. So sometimes that just happens, but unfortunately some of y'all got hail, but the good news is some of y'all also got needed rainfall. The complex of thunderstorms that brought some hail to Lubbock yesterday has continued to move southeast overnight into the eastern Permian Basin, the western Big Country, brought a little bit of rain to San Angelo down the Concho Valley, and that complex of thunderstorms is now dissipating in the far western Hill Country, and we also have a few showers in far southeastern New Mexico and in portions of the western Permian Basin ongoing early this morning. All of that will leave a rain-cooled air mass and a bit of an outflow boundary, or at least a temperature gradient as we head into the afternoon hours. Let's pop on over to the high resolution rapid refresh model as we head into this afternoon. You can see along that boundary, we're gonna see some strong to severe storms fire up in Oklahoma this afternoon with the threat for some hail and strong winds. Those storms are going to try to move south towards the Red River early this evening, potentially a crossing over the Red River into Northwest Texas. We could also see a few scattered showers and storms this afternoon across portions of the Concho Valley and then back west into West Texas. And you can see we also have some showery garbage, for the lack of a better term, across Southeast Texas, down the coast into South Texas. And we are not expecting a lot of hail out of that, but you know, frequent cloud to ground lightning, some gusty wind, some heavy rain, maybe some small hail will be possible. Then as we head into Tuesday, we're going to start to dry out across more of the state. You'll note precipitation chances start to be confined to portions of now here, we'll just let the loop play out and I'll talk over it. You could see some scattered showers and storms, especially along the upper Texas coast tomorrow and into Tuesday afternoon, maybe a few storms across the northern Edwards Plateau into the southern Concho Valley. Before Wednesday, we see the chance for some showers and storms in southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle, the middle and upper Texas coast, in association with a area of low pressure over the northern Gulf of Mexico. If this was June, we'd be worried about that becoming a tropical storm. And frankly, even a few models a few days ago were saying that could become a tropical storm in the northern Gulf of Mexico later this week as it moves away from us. But that's probably not going to happen, probably being the key word. So in terms of the forecast, rain chances through this afternoon, you can see a continuation of some scattered showers and storms through the afternoon hours across pretty much the southern half of Texas. Uh, folks not really dealing with this. Panhandle, North Texas, Northeast Texas, East Texas, the Golden Triangle, and Far West Texas from Van Horn, El Paso, etc. As we head into tonight, we'll see a couple of showers and storms again, kind of two zones. One, Edwards Plateau into the Rio Grande Plains, maybe east into the Middle Texas Coast, Coastal Bend, Coastal Plains, and then that second chance for a few strong storms across Northwest Texas and Texoma this evening as storms roll south out of Oklahoma. On Tuesday, a couple of isolated to maybe scattered showers and storms. Uh, Concho Valley, Edwards Plateau, Hill Country, South Central Texas, South Texas, Rio Grande Plains, Rio Grande Valley, up the coast through the coastal bend, the Middle Texas coast, and then a slightly higher chance along the Upper Texas coast tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, and then tomorrow night. You can see the state mostly high and dry with the exception of the Upper Texas coast, maybe Galveston Island, up towards the Golden Triangle. In terms of forecast rain totals over the next day, day and a half, you can see we're generally concentrating on the Concho Valley, Edwards Plateau, Rio Grande Plains. But again, a lot of what uh, may be shown on this graphic is really going to depend on if we have air mass recovery after this morning's little thunderstorm complex that rolled on 
through. All right, in terms of fire weather forecast over the next couple of days, we're going to have moderated conditions across the state for today and tomorrow. We're going to start ticking up the wildfire threat index on Wednesday with the threat returning to high across parts of the panhandle, and that will likely continue to increase and expand as we head into Thursday and Friday and return to a more springtime weather pattern with the dry line starting to become more active again. In terms of temperatures over the next five days, we're not going to see a whole lot of changes in the temperature forecasts from today through midweek through late week. We will be dealing with a strong cold front Friday into Saturday into Sunday, which will bring a northerly wind shift and some drop in temperatures in addition to precipitation chances. So for today, we're generally talking about 70s to right around 80 degrees across Texas, a little warmer tomorrow across the far western sections of Texas, down into the Guadalupe Mounds, uh, Pecos there at about 86 tomorrow, Dalhart probably 82, 83, you can see 83 in Dumas, 82 in Amarillo. 70s to lower 80s elsewhere. A couple degrees warmer on Wednesday. 80s become widespread across the panhandle. You can definitely see the terrain features there across the panhandle and coming off the cap rock showing up in this high temperature forecast. Could see 80s, maybe a 90 degree reading there across the western third of Texas. Otherwise, 70s to low 80s eastern two thirds of Texas as we head into Thursday. Uh, honestly, same story. I mean, temperatures might get one, two degrees warmer, but again, we're not really dealing with any sort of massive temperature fluctuations. And then on Friday, we are going to see a bit of a change here uh, as the dry line becomes active. We're going to start seeing a cold front approach from the north. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will see increased wind speeds across Texas, so it'll actually act like April again with the wind. And then we're also going to probably see our warmest day of the week, at least the work week, on Friday across the state with plenty of 80s across the state, maybe a couple of 90s, and then also perhaps the chance for a few severe storms on Friday as the dry line becomes active. And then we may see thunderstorm chances on Saturday across the southern southeastern two-thirds of Texas, but uh, there's still plenty of disagreement in weather model land, so we'll just deal with that as we get a little later in the week, but do not be surprised if we're talking about the chance for some stormies by Friday and Saturday across the state. So with all that being said, hope some of y'all did get rain over the weekend. We needed it uh, without the hail, obviously. We will have the next Texas Weather Roundup out by 7 a.m. Tuesday. As always, you can keep an eye on the sky and get your local weather forecasts in the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers in your device's app store. Y'all have a great Monday, and God bless.